We'd like to update you on two shootings that occurred right around the same time today, around 1.50 today. The first shooting occurred at 1.50 uh, p.m. Uh, at Benito Juarez High School, located at 1400 West Surmac. As school was being dismissed in, in staggered phases, um, a shooting occurred resulting in two deceased persons and two other people struck by gunfire uh, right now in serious condition being treated. Uh, we do not have suspects in custody. Uh, we are continuing our preliminary investigation uh, and we will be updating uh, you all if uh, new information becomes available. Uh, at this time, uh, we don't have offenders identified, uh, so uh, obviously we uh, are conducting a pretty aggressive investigation. All of our resources are being dedicated uh, to ensure uh, that we uh, bring these people to justice that caused this. Uh, in addition, we also want to give out our condolences to the families of these victims. Uh, as well as uh, to this community. The second shooting occurred around the same time, 1.50, uh, at 1999 West Jackson. That's Jackson at Damon. Uh, one victim is deceased in that shooting, and another victim is critical. Uh, we believe this particular shooting is a potential gang conflict and again, our condolences go to the family as we proceed to gather evidence to bring offender or offenders to justice. We don't have anyone in custody. We don't have an offender identified in the second shooting uh, as well. Um, we don't have much additional information to share, but we'll take a few uh, of your questions. We don't have that information to share at this time. Uh, this is an active and ongoing investigation, and so as soon as we know ages and other information of the victims, we'll, we'll certainly share that with you. Are they all Juarez students? Again, uh, we don't have uh, the victim information to share with you at this time. As soon as we know that, we'll share that with you. Is there any shooting related to gangs? So again, uh, we don't know that it's uh, related to any of the students there at this time. As soon as we know, we will. So please don't characterize your reporting in that way. Uh, but as soon as we know, we'll, we'll share that with you. And nor do we know the identity of the offenders at this point. Uh, so, but you know, again, this is a preliminary investigation. We're just getting started. We're reviewing video in the area. We're reviewing our uh, cameras at our police district and in and, and OMC. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get further along in the investigation sooner rather than later. Yes? Um, you mentioned video. You all have video of the shooting and also? So we have pod camera throughout the neighborhood. So we're reviewing all of that camera as well as our teams, our area technology teams, they respond to shootings and look at any potential private video that might uh, be pointed toward the area where the crime scene is. So it could be both uh, city of Chicago video as well as any private video. We, we just don't speculate. It's too early to speculate. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, speaking of video, we're hearing from sources that the school has not turned over video. Is there any comment on that or the reasoning why that might be? So again, uh, speculation. Okay. It's just it's just not appropriate. But uh, to not, so, you all said pod and private video. There is not the video from the school, correct? So again, you, you talk about your sources. I don't know who those people are. We're just starting our investigation. Uh, and so I, I think it would be irresponsible. Uh, to, 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 to no, we're not trial. confirming your source yeah. information. Um, we, what we're saying is we're just starting this video uh, gathering, and we're just starting the investigation. Mm -hmm. Any speculation would just be inappropriate. Mm -hmm. These are kids leaving school on Friday who just got shot, really killed. I mean, when we, we, haven't, we haven't confirmed any information about the victim. 
So it would just be conjecture on your part or your source's part that uh, the victims are students. As soon as we know that, we will share that information with you. According to your sources, again, I, I just don't want to speculate in an early in an investigation on any sources that are saying something that's uncooperated. So we, we have to, as a police department, go with accurate information, and it's so early in the investigation. And again, we, we want to give uh, due respect to the victim's family. Uh, so let's, let's slow down and confirm the victim information, and then we'll share it with you. We can, uh, as long as you don't jump to these victims or students before we can confirm that. Sure. Yes. So again, any crimes anywhere in the city is obviously a concern to us, but especially when they're uh, near or around schools. Uh, many of our officers are uh, parents, uh, or uncles, are, are you know aunts of, of young people. So we, we are always, as police officers, extremely concerned of any impact of, that violence might have uh, on school age students. Uh, can you speak to any of the resources that might be available to... Yes, I'll, I'll turn that over to uh, the CPS reps here, of Jadine or Pedro. <coughs> yeah. yeah so, so again, everyone, please, all of us are trying to find answers. Um, of course, I'm very concerned because this happened on our grounds. And anything that's even close to our schools, you know, we're always very concerned. Uh, we will fully cooperate with CPD. They're great partners for us. Uh, we're going to get the facts. Um, but as, as the superintendent said, first, we want to first make sure that, you know, we, we really have the, fa the victims in our prayers. Um, and we're still getting a lot of details. In the meantime, our focus is going to be making sure that uh, and any time a school is affected, uh, in this example, Benito Juarez, but even, even as we get more information about uh, the individuals affected, we always provide significant supports for the schools. And so we're already working with the staff now. We're working with the principal. Uh, we'll be providing supports um, you know, as needed this weekend, but also you know, definitely uh, as we start the, the, our last week of school before the semester ends. And uh, I'll ask, ask Jadina to give you more specifics and, and thank you so much uh, for that question. Um, obviously, the priority for us in making sure that we're affecting, um, you know, just the impact of that trauma is to make sure we're supporting the entire school community. That includes providing crisis supports, counseling supports, grief counseling. Even if, again, as uh, Superintendent said, it's very preliminary, so we don't have the information um, on the specifics. But regardless, the fact that it happened so close to a school means that our school community is impacted. So over the weekend, we'll be working with the principal and his team to make sure that we have a plan as we approach Monday. Um, first thing Monday morning, we will have additional um, counseling supports, grief counseling supports, as well as additional safety and security supports. Um, so we'll have additional security. And I know our partners at 12th District from CPD will give us additional support on the outside, um, just out of an abundance of caution. Okay. And then uh, before we take any more final questions, you know, we want to make sure you understand the cadence of a shooting investigation. First and foremost, it's not identifying if a person is uh, attending a school, it's getting them to the hospital. Uh, and getting them the appropriate treatment so that they can survive. So before interviews are done, uh, we are not telling the doctor to stand back and wait for the detective to talk to these victims. So, but as that process happens, them getting treatment and their, their you know, loved ones get an opportunity to see them, talk to them, then our detectives are right there to get this information. So uh, again, I just wanted to slow everyone down on um, you know, our ability to talk to victims who have survived to get information about, you know, whether they went to the school, whether they're active students, former students, or not students at all. Let's let them get treated by the doctors at fir first and, and, and get through this. And then we'll obviously at the appropriate time share with you what we have learned uh, from the victims, if you don't mind. That, that's not being stubborn about this, but we just really want to understand uh, how important it is to make sure these victims survive. Uh, before we start interviewing them about, you know, were they active students, former students, et cetera, et cetera. 
No issue about who was used and how many um, rounds were fired. Yes, we, we, we don't know the details of that. Multiple rounds would be the best characterization at this point since four people were hit. Uh, but as soon as we're able to go through uh, the pod video or any private video um, and, and identify shooters, guns, we'll share that with you. And in, just in time with earlier this year, we had a shooting outside of uh, Schur's on the second day of school at dismissal. What can the city do and what is the city doing to help prevent these sort of targeted attacks that we're seeing now twice in three months? I think some of our uh, efforts include obviously uh, using our informants in the community to include stakeholders uh, who you know, work with our districts here at the 12th district at our beat meetings, sharing information about uh, potential uh, conflicts, whether gang related or personal conflicts. I think our work with uh, CPS is important to ensure that CPS uh, is, you know, obviously engaged with their young people and, you know, de-escalating any conflicts in the school, but also, you know, our neighborhoods are, are, are vital uh, to this information sharing as it relates to being able to, uh, you know, tamp down on any type of uh, potential gun violence. Uh, you know, what gets reported is what happens, but, you know, the things that have been avoided obviously don't, never make the news, but, you know, the, these are strong communities and we, uh, strong families, and, and they work with uh, all of the stakeholders in the community to ensure that the police department can do what it can to, to reduce violence in the community. So thank you very thank much. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.